Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna be changing the brake pads on the 350Z. It's been squealing for the past 100, 200, 300 miles or so on the highway. I've been slowing down pretty quick, so apparently the pads are getting pretty low. I checked them on the back. They look pretty low themselves, so I don't wanna see what the inners look like because it's probably gonna be even worse. So we're gonna be changing them today. Here in the background is the S2K. That's gonna be getting all its fluids changed real soon. So there'll be videos on that soon. Uh, but today, let's get these brake pads done. Hopefully the rotors don't need to be done. Uh, I'm gonna be checking the measurement on them on how thick they are. If they're in the minimum spec, then I'm probably just gonna keep those regular rotors still on there. Hopefully we don't have to change them because that's gonna be even a bigger pain in the butt because it's freezing outside right now, so how this goes. So coming down here we got all of our tools that we're gonna need today. We got our brake pads obviously front and rear. I got Dural GT because they got carbon fiber in them so they resist better to heat. Uh, I travel on the highway a little bit more so sometimes you gotta do those quick stops that heat up the brake pads quite a bit so hopefully they'll last a little bit longer. Then we got our torque wrench. It's always good to have that. We got our five inch C-clamps for pushing in the pistons on the actual caliper. We got our screwdriver for taking off those little brackets on the caliper. Then we got our 14 millimeter right here. That's gonna be removing the caliper bolts. We have our half inch, dry, uh, half inch ratchet and obviously a brake lubricant. We got our jack as the usual, boards to lift the car up. And we're gonna have jack stands. I'll bring those in later. Uh, and here's a bag. I'm going to show you how to uh, not mark up your lug nuts and the actual rim. It's a little trick I learned. And um, so let's get this started. Boom, there are the jack stands that I was talking about. So what I like to do is I take my wrench right here, standard one that came with the car, and I simply slip it into this bag right here and I cover that end of the actual wrench. So that way there's a barrier between the actual wrench and the lug nut. So that way you're not scratching up the lug nut or even your rims for that matter so it just provides extra protection and as you can see right here it works just as it would regularly and you could just take them off from there very simple I didn't show it on camera but I loosened these lug nuts while the tire is still on the ground so that way we could actually get them off once the car is actually in the air and right here we're just lining up the jack so that way it's halfway on those pinch welds so it doesn't actually bend them or anything like it already has been done on it. And I'm just going to get into the car and what I'm going to do is turn the wheel in the direction that's going to give me the most room to get the caliper bolts off. So in this case I'm doing the driver's side so we're going to end up turning the wheel toward the left. And this is what you're left with, a much easier area to work on. Since we're not doing the rotors on this car, we're only doing the brake pads, we're only going to remove this bolt right here. It's a 14 millimeter. That's just so the caliper swings back up and we can replace those pads. Put that 14 millimeter on there with your half inch and you're going to loosen it now. And once you break it loose, you just want to take that little bolt right off of there and the caliper should swing freely. So I'm going to show you guys a picture here of my actual brake pads. It looks like they're actually fine. I ended up buying pads for the rear and the front because the rear were already squeaking so I figured the fronts were had to be going bad too but it looks like they're actually fine so I'm probably going to leave these on for a little bit more probably through the winter and uh, replace them in the summer but other than that maybe grease the pins real quick but I'll probably put the caliper back down and leave these pads alone. Uh, I checked the other side as well and they look exactly the same like this so there's no reason to change them right now. So like I said I'm not going to be replacing them but if you actually were going to you would simply pull the caliper back up, you'd 
pop out those old pads and then this bracket right here you'd pop that out as well clean underneath the bracket grease the new brackets up put them in put the new pads in make sure you grease the ends of the pad and the rear of the actual pad and then simply put them back in throw the caliper back down very carefully of course and um, and then put your 14 millimeter bolt back on at 20 pounds So at this point I already jacked up the rear of the car and I removed the boat tires. So coming in here we have our 14 millimeter again. You want to take the top bolt off of, on the caliper so that way the caliper actually swings back down and it won't tug on that actual line right there. So right here I already broke it root loose so I used a 14 millimeter socket right there on a 3 8 ratchet because the half inch was actually too big to fit in the actual wheel well. So I just simply put it on there. I took a little rubber mallet and hit it a couple times just to break it loose. It's not the, the best thing for your ratchet but it has to get done so we gotta do what we gotta do. So right here I swung the caliper down very carefully of course. We don't have to worry too much because that 14 millimeter is still holding it in the back right there and the control arm is also holding the line itself. And as you can see here these pads are big time shots because there's barely any pad there but we caught them in time where it didn't wreck the rotors or anything this is probably the most optimal time of changing them. So we just want to make sure that the grooves that the bracket goes into are actually all cleaned out. A wire brush would be optimal but I didn't have one at the time so I just used my finger and that cleaned it out pretty well. Uh, here's the bracket, we're just going to put that on now. And once the bracket's on we just want to use this brake lubricant. Uh, just put that on all the brackets and the actual pad ends and the actual back of the pad itself. And now we just want to take our C-clamp and slowly twist it back, twist that piston back into the actual caliper. You want to be very careful with it, you don't want to tear the rubber or actually hurt the actual caliper or piston itself. And now we're just going to slowly raise that caliper back over the brake pads itself. Be very careful of this boot right here not to rip it or anything. And after that we're going to put the pin back in. And here's just showing that pin all greased up with brake lubricant. You want to make sure you coat the whole pin so that way it doesn't wreck it or anything when the caliper is sliding back and forth. And we always want to hand tighten that pin slash bolt back into the caliper. You don't want to cross thread this because your caliper will probably be shot then. And now we put our torque wrench on it. It's a 3H drive, 14 millimeter. Once again, just enough room to tighten it to 20 foot pounds. So I'm actually going to pull this lower pin as well, the 14 millimeter bolt, and grease that pin as well. And now that that pin is back in and greased, we just want to double check. Usually I go back with my torque wrench, just double check that those two bolts are tightened to spec. And after that you pretty much just want to move on to your other side and do the same steps in repeat. After that put the tires back on, torque the, the lug nuts down and lower the car and that's gonna be it. That's gonna be a full brake pad change on a 350Z. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and hit that little notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. See you guys, and remember, hit Redline every day.